welcome to the Bag Makers Society podcast, your ultimate destination for all things bag making. If you're passionate about crafting beautiful and functional bags, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, you're in the right place. My name's Deb and I'm thrilled that you're joining me on this creative journey. In each episode, we'll dive into the world of bag making, exploring a range of topics that will fuel your imagination and ignite your sewing prowess. From discussing the latest bag patterns that have the crafting community buzzing to exploring various fabrics that can add that perfect touch to your designs and everything else in between. We'll also be joined by some incredible guests, bag makers, designers and small business owners who will share their experiences, insights and invaluable tips to help you level up your bag making game. So whether you're stitching your first tote bag or perfecting your crossbody skills, this podcast is your source for inspiration, education and a good dose of bag making camaraderie. Let's create, stitch and explore the boundless world of bag making together. Join in with the Bag Makers Society podcast and let's source something extraordinary. I can't wait to share this adventure with you, so make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and tune in to our upcoming episodes. Let's get started. Hi and welcome back to the next episode of the Bag Makers Society podcast. Um, I wanted to start this episode by just saying thank you to those people who have messaged me and told me that they've enjoyed the first episode. Um, Loads of encouraging inboxes and messages so that's been absolutely amazing. I've been contacted by a few people who are interested in coming on the podcast um so yeah it's it's been it's been a bit of a whirlwind week so thank you very much for that so i thought i'd do this episode and mainly aim it at those that are just dipping their toes into the world of bag making so bag making for beginners if you like and tie it in with the blog post that i've just recently published on my website so that blog post is about my five most favourite and most used free bag patterns. Um, It is going to be six. So there was a little bit bit of a lie in that first part because I did the first five and I published the blog post and then it irked me that I haven't included another bag pattern. So I'm going to include it. So it will change to the top six uh, bag making patterns. So that went live on my website yesterday and it's just basically talking about these these free patterns which I think everybody when they're first getting into bag making should explore. It's a great way to test out whether you like a designer's style, the way they write the patterns, um, the way they put the patterns together um, without sort of having to invest in more expensive and, and quite often more intricate Um, bag patterns usually the free ones are aimed at beginners so they don't take up a lot of fabric they don't take up a lot of bag making hardware so things you know like d-rings and zips and you might find that they'll have little bits in but it'll not be a very involved pattern so it's a great way to start so that is where i thought i would take this episode so in the blog post like i see i talk about my five favourite patterns, the ones that I reach for the the most. And it won't come as any surprise to anybody who follows me on social media or who is part of the um, the Bag Night Society Facebook group um, that the first one that I had on there was the Sunshine Crossbody by Bagstock. That is probably one of the very first bags that I actually made. So after I'd made my necessary clutch clutch wallet which is the first thing that I ever made which is a which is a paid for pattern um I obviously got hooked and wanted to find all of the patterns and try all of the things and I came across this this pattern by bag stock and it was a free pattern so I thought well why not why not give it a go and I just absolutely love it and you know nearly you know however long it is since I discovered that pattern you know years and years and years that um, I still reach for it. In fact, I reach for it so much that I've actually made my own templates out of um, clear cutting um, chopping boards. 
because I because I used the pattern back so much that it was worth me doing that. And the one of the reasons that I love this pattern is because it's great for using up things like fat quarters. It doesn't take a lot of material for any given piece. So if you're anything like me and you go to Aldi or you go to Lidl to do your food shopping and they've got a crafting special buy on and the, the aisles are full of fat quarters and you pick those fat quarters up because you can't resist them and then you end up with a great big stash of fat quarters that you don't actually know what to do with. Patterns like this one are great for using up those or for using up little bits that have come out of other projects. Um, so, yeah, it is, like I say, a great way to utilise those bits of fabric that we kind of really don't know what to do with. And then the other reason that I think it's a great pattern for bag makers is that it actually incorporates quite a few skills that you would use in other patterns as well. So obviously it's got a zip on the top and the directions for putting that in are really good. And then there's a zipper pocket on the front. And I think that is a great, a great skill to, to put in is that front zipper pocket. Because actually you can incorporate that in other patterns once you've sort of feel happy with, with putting in zips and, and doing the zipper pockets that way. If you want to add that into another pattern that doesn't have it, it's really quite easy to do by just sort of slashing the pattern piece where you want that zip to fit, adding on a seam allowance and then installing that zipper pocket exactly the same way that this pattern explains it to do. So it is a really good um, skill and um, building pattern. It also has box corners, which is used in a lot of patterns. So it's a great one to test that out with. And you can actually do it, although it's it's marketed as a crossbody, you could do it as just um, a pouch, you know, so not putting in your strap connectors or, or making a crossbody strap and, and making it into um, like a wash bag or a toiletry bag or just even sort of having it as a little clutch. So without any um, handles or, or straps on it and just having it as a little clutch bag. So that is the reason that this was probably the first one that I put on there because it is probably the one that I reach for the most. I think it's quite a stylish pattern. You can incorporate um, accent pieces or you can do it. I, I quite like to do it all in vinyl and not have an accent piece. And I, I think it, it looks so, so classy when it's done like that as well. So it does have a lot of scope to kind of make it your own and really put your individual stamp on it. So that was number one on my blog post. Number two was the Miss Maggie um, handbag by Emmeline Bags. So obviously the first thing that I, that I did was the NCW, which is an Emmeline Bags. So when I was on the website, I saw this pattern, which like I say, it's free of charge. So I downloaded it and it, you know, like everybody else's, it's, it's sat in my drawer for quite a while. And then, and then I made it up. Now, one of the reasons that I like this pattern and I think it's a great one to have in your arsenal. Is it so simplistic? It's so classy looking. Um, it doesn't take a lot of materials, um, it, but it does use strap anchors to connect the, the handles onto it. So it's a good one to try if you've never done, you know, strap anchors, strap like the metal strap connectors. Um, it's a really good bag to sort of test that out on because it actually doesn't need a lot of other hardware. I think possibly the only other thing is a magnetic snap. So it's not it's not a pattern that you're going to have to buy lots of things for. Yes, the strap anchors, you know, are probably a big a big part of the cost of making this bag. But then everything else is really just materials and interfaces which you've probably got building up in your stash anyway like I say it is it's a really it's a really classy bag it um it's sort of like reminiscent of kind of you know the designer bags that you see 
you know, when you go into House of Fraser and well, I don't even know if House of Fraser are still in existence anymore, but you know, you go into John Lewis or Selfridges and it wouldn't look out of place on a stand in there. Um, it's a really, really nice bag. It doesn't take a lot of sewing, so it take, actually comes together really quickly as well. So it's quite a good afternoon, like what I call an afternoon bag. You can get it cut out and interfaced and pretty much sewn up in a, you know, a, a good chunk afternoon. I'm not talking just an hour or two, but, um, you know, if you started after lunch and, you know, maybe it's an hour or so after tea, but you could you could get it done. Um, so that was the reason that I included that one because that those are the skills that I think that that pattern brings um, to to a newbie bag maker. And then I move on to Swoon, and Swoon actually have quite a lot of free bag patterns, and I've done quite a lot of them. I've got a, a tutorial for the Ethel Tote on my YouTube. And I was, I did toy with the Ethel Tote because it is very, very minimal hardware. So it is just fabric and interfacing um, and, a, and a magnetic snap, really. That, that is all you need for that bag. Um, but I thought the other patterns that I'm including kind of cover those, that, those skills that that bag brings. So what I did is I actually included a bag that is a very recent discovery to me, um, even though it's been out for quite a while, and that is the, the Dolly Mini Crossbody. Now, I, I don't know how I've missed it. I don't know how I haven't seen it, because when I did actually see it, I was like, wow, that's amazing. And one of the reasons that I think this bag is, is a good one for a beginner to have a go at, it's probably one of the more involved patterns that I've included. So... Maybe don't do it as your very first bag, but once you've got a couple under your belt, definitely give it a go. And the reason that I think this is such a good pattern for a, for a beginner bag maker is because it uses such small pieces to bring together the bag that it's, a, that it's brilliant for using up all the, little, all the little scraps that you end up with or if you know, you, you're um, lucky enough to have a friend who's into bag making and they might have um, gifted you some scraps to have a bit of practice with your sewing machine on, you can utilise sort of quite small pieces into this bag. Um, again, it doesn't take massive amounts of hardware. It does have a crossbody strap, um, so you need sort of D-rings for strap connectors and, and that sort of thing but it doesn't have a massive amount of hardware to go to it. Where where this bag is kind of, you know, where, where it sort of has things that stand out is the way that the pattern pieces are put together. It's like a little mini saddle, satchel bag. So it's actually great if you sew for kids because it's a perfect size for kids, but it's a great size to have is just a bag if you just want to have, you know, your keys, a couple of cards, you know, a, a few coins, and you don't want to be going out with a full-size handbag. You can make it really funky as well. With all the little different pattern pieces that it has, you can put them together in loads of different colours and make something so funky and so stylish and so unique. Um, yeah, this is one of the reasons why this, this pattern stands out for me. So it'll give you... Um, great practice with top stitching because you are putting quite a few pieces together to make particularly the flap and if you go onto the blog post um, you'll see there's pictures of, of each of the patterns and then if you basically if you click the picture it will take you to the pattern as well I've linked it all I've tried to make it as easy for people to find the patterns as possible from the blog post um, but yeah it can be so such a funky unique design and, you know, I think it's perfect to have as a bag for yourself, but actually I think it's a really good gift from bag as well. Um, so if you're making for other people, so if you've, if you've got kids that you make for, or even teenagers, um, it, would be, it would be great for them. And then I move on to a wristlet pattern, which is the Shazzy Wristlet by Oro Rosa. I've included this one. I've actually only made it a couple of times, but each time I've made it, I've really enjoyed making it. It's not a very involved pattern. Again, it's quite a quick pattern to make up. Um, it's mostly straight lines. 
obviously you're inserting a zip in the top so that is a very good skill to have because a lot of bags will will have that element as part of it but the reason that I've included it is actually because of what's on the inside in this bag and that is that it incorporates card slots and that it incorporates a slip pocket for for your phone as well so with the, with the card slots the way that they're done is they're actually done into the lining so again with enough practice of doing this pattern you'd probably be able to develop the skill to manipulate other linings to incorporate card slots as well so you could use the card slot um, from this pattern make it up and then be able to make it fit with um, another lining in another bag um, because it, it's, it just works so well and it, it, it goes into you know how to make your card slots where to mark them how to fold them you know, sewn down the centre to divide the card slots up so that it fits the cards in perfectly. So I think that's a really good skill to have because adding card slots and, and such like in their bags, especially little bags, if you, you know, you're just making yourself a little wrist, wristlet or literally making um, a little small crossbody, it, that would be an, a really good element to add so that is why that one was included it's also a really really nice nice bag when it's made up um it's nice in cottons you can make it in thinner vinyls i wouldn't use a vinyl that's too thick but definitely thinner vinyls would work really really well so i come on to what should be the last of the five but is actually the penultimate um, bag which is the sling by mrs h and the reason that I put this one in, and probably it should have been number one, because this is probably, if you've never made a bag before, this is probably a bag that you should make. First of all, because Mrs. H. Patterns are really written very, very well. Um, so Samantha, who runs Mrs. H, um, is an excellent pattern designer, and our instructions are very, very thorough, very detailed. Um, so... You literally, you literally can't go wrong. That's they're, they're very, very easy to follow. So the sling pattern is um, basically sort of like quite a... I wouldn't sort of say it hobo... Maybe it's hobo style bag, um, but it's quite sort of slouchy. It's quite big. So ideal, you know, if when you're going to work, if you need to put mini laptops or files or anything in your bag um, or your lunch or... You know, maybe it's, it's quite a good one. Uh, you know, if you go to the gym straight after work, you could use it to put your, your gym equipment and your gym shoes in as well, as well as it being quite a stylish bag. It doesn't take a lot of hardware. It has a crossbody strap, but that's pretty much the only hardware that you need. Um, but So, yeah, that's why that one has been included, because I think that is actually a great one to start off with. And then the final bag that I didn't put on the blog post, but that I'm probably going to update the blog post. So if you listen to this in a few weeks time and you go on, it might be on there. But the last one is a pattern by crafted by Leanne and it's the Harlequin pouch. And this is a, like a brilliant pattern. She has quite a few variations of it on her group so if you go on Facebook and go into the Crafted by Leanne's Facebook group all of the Harlequin patterns are in the files at the very top and she has made not only the original pouch but then made it into a crossbody version and then also made it into a pencil case version as well and I have actually found that if you take the original pouch and print it at 65 to 70 percent it's a perfect glasses case size as well. So 65 if your glasses are sort of quite slim and neat fitting, 70 if you know you've got quite bigger frames. Um, but it makes it makes an excellent glasses case. So the reason that I think this pattern is a great beginner's pattern is not only because there's, there's quite a few variations of it, is because the way the, the pattern pieces are put together, it has a geometrical is that a word geometrical? I don't know whether that's a word. It's got a geometric 
um, design to it. So you'll put the pattern pieces together and then it forms sort of like a V shape on, on the front panel. So you, you get a practice top stitching, but then also matching up those seams because they are visible on the front. And obviously the, the, the better they are matched up, the better the effect of the pouch. So that's one of the that's the reason that I've now sort of backtracked a little bit and I'm gonna be including the, the Harlequin pouch by Crafted by the Arm. Um I've, I've I've made it in so many variations. Like see I've made it as glasses cases, I've made it as wash bags, I've made it as crossbody bags. Um it's a really versatile pattern and like a lot of these patterns great scrap buster because the pattern pieces are so small um when obviously because then they get put together and make big pieces um it's it's really good for utilizing little bits that aren't big enough to use in general but far too big to be warranted to be thrown away so that is my take on what i think are some of the best free patterns for building your skills as as a newbie bag maker obviously there are hundreds of bag patterns out there you'll find lots of taut patterns out there um, lots of youtube channels that offer free tutorials so Deb debbie shaw's youtube channel she has loads of projects on there and they're all usually very beginner friendly and one of the other channels that I've heard talked about quite a bit, I think I think it's pronounced Miko or Miko, and it's M I K O, and they are on YouTube. And all of those patterns that are on there are free. Um, some are obviously a bit more um, intricate and involved, but there are a lot of patterns on there that are perfect for for beginners. And the, the instructions are, are quite good as well. It's it's a um, a channel where it, it isn't speaking, so it just comes up with the captions of what you have to do, which some people prefer. That you know that is a style that a lot of people do like. They don't like the chatty tutorials. They just prefer to be shown what to do. Um, so if that's you, then don't listen to my channel because I do chat on quite a bit. Um, but watch a channel like that, like that. Um, I'm sure it's Miko, Miko. Um, but then, then I think it's got crafts after it. But if you put it into YouTube, I mean, it's got millions of subscribers, so it will be one. It will be the top one that comes up. So definitely, definitely check out that one. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think that was kind of all of the, the the kind of free patterns that I had to go through. And I hope that anybody who is starting their journey in the bag making or even maybe somebody who's listening who's been bag making for quite some time and thinks oh I haven't made that pattern for ages I'm going to go back and make it or, or like me maybe hadn't seen one of these patterns before or hadn't heard of them and go off and give them a give them a try and they might discover a bag designer that they've not tried before that they really enjoy making and you know go on to make further further patterns from them so yeah that's pretty much it for this week i hope you've enjoyed it um i'm going to try and keep the episodes roughly to about the 25 to 30 minute mark um i don't want them to go on too long I don't want them to become too repetitive and i do want them to be of use to people i don't just want to be putting a podcast out there for the sake of putting a podcast out there um so if anybody's got any ideas or suggestions that they'd like me to cover feel free to message me. Like I say, I have had a few people express interest in coming on the podcast, which is amazing. Um, I just need to figure out the technology and how to do that because I'm, I'm still getting used to all the technology doing doing it just on my own. So that'll be something I'm working on this week. So any suggestions, um, any comments, I'd love to hear them. You can obviously find me on my Facebook page, which is Me Made Makes. Um, I'm also in the Facebook group a lot which is the UK Bag Makers Society and you can also get in touch with me via my website which is simply 
memademakes.co.uk. So there's plenty of ways in which you can connect with me, and I do love to hear from people. Um, I am, although I'm a little bit of a hermit, I am quite a people person as well. So I do love to hear from from people and their bag making journey and experiences and 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 such like, or even just you know pictures of dogs. <laughs> anything, I, I I love to hear from people about anything. So thank you very much for listening, and until next time. Happy sewing and may your bobbin always be full.